Hello everybody. <laughs> Today we are talking with our host Kayo. Uh, we are now in Chapada dos Guimarães. This guy was so good to invite us to his magnificent place, to his hotel, uh, which is called Casa de Quineira, uh, in the middle of town with the good view uh, to local park. So now we are talking, we are sitting here in a beautiful hall. I've been a hotelier, let's say, for two years now. Actually, on the 12th of June, which is tomorrow, right? We are gonna have our second anniversary. Mm. We opened on the 12th of June in 2014, which was for the World Cup, that tragedy mm -hmm. that happened in mm -hmm. Brazil. But uh, a necessary tragedy, let's say. Brazil needed to yes. understand uh -huh. what was mm -hmm. wrong with our soccer. And uh, we kind of, you know, uh, used the opportunity that we're hosting a major international event just to turn our country house, this is where it used to be our country house, into a hotel, you know. We, my family, we always love to, you know, to receive, be hosts, to receive to host people, people and to host people from all over and friends and family and I've been a couch surfer for, you know, almost a decade now, so my family was kind of involved in some of the couch surfing experiences that I had, so we always loved to do this and we just decided to start charging for it now <laughs> with the hotel. <laughs> but uh, once I started with that, I kind of thought like, okay, my couch surfing days are over. I was really sad because I'm much more of a couch surfer than a hotelier. And uh, after a while, I just figured out that, well, no, no, you know what, this is my house. Yeah, I, you know, I can put whoever I want here. So I started getting couch surfers again. <clears throat> and it is weird because I'm having couch surfers over in a hotel facility, which is kind of an unusual, mm -hmm. at least, you know, because couch surfing is kind of the antithesis of hotels. And the most expensive room is $200 around. Oh, my math is horrible. No, okay, you but got me there. the rooms around 100? Around 800 reais, which is, you're good in math? I don't know. Yeah, 150 but dollars, 250 dollars. Yeah, okay, something like the, that. In this range. Yeah. Uh, so you decided to share the couch surfing experience and yeah. hotel experience in one place. Blend it all together. Yeah, which is something new. Yeah, that's it is. You are, you are a singer. I am a singer, and yeah. Today you are going to... Today I'm, I have a, a presentation, a show or whatever. I find it hard to say show. Are you excited? I am, I am. <laughs> uh, I used to be very nervous, like getting diarrhea, kind of nervous. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Seriously, it was, it was rough in the beginning. Um, because I'm kind of a shy guy, so it was really difficult for me to put myself out there and, yeah. and just, just speak to someone in public would be difficult. Singing would be like even harder. And in the beginning it was really hard, my parents insisted, and this has been my school in a way, because I've been singing here every Saturday uh, for more than a year and a half now. So it's been kind of a school for me, and right now I, I don't feel nervous anymore. Okay. There's some kind of, I feel a little bit nervous, let's say, but it's a healthy nervous, mm -hmm. you know, like... A, that can help. Yeah, it helps, because it keeps you grounded, you know. Uh, before, I was completely destabilized <laughs> by the fear of singing, but right now it's just a, a little fear of, you know, just be prepared. Just My repertoire is a little romantic, let's say, when I sing international uh, classics from, you know, like, old days and present days. I sing, let's say, Edith Piaf, Edith Piaf um, in English I sing Frank Sinatra, Ray Charles, you know, Michael Jackson, and stuff like that. But also sing in Italian, in French, Spanish, and some things in Portuguese as well. But the majority of the, the repertoire is in English, probably around 60 to 70 percent, I would say. And you are, you are a traveler. You travel I am. a lot of countries. Yeah, I've been to 39 countries so far. Countries. And you use couch surfing? Yeah, a lot, a lot. When I lived in Europe, it was when I used more, but I also traveled a lot in Europe in like vacations and specific uh, holidays, then I would have people over, like people from Brazil that was uh, like cousins and friends and my family or whatever. And when they came, and we, they came for us to travel. And sometimes the idea of couch surfing for them wasn't as appealing as it is to me. So I had to go for 
the traditional hotel or, mm -hmm. or hostel. So but I lost a lot of opportunity. Because even if you, ha if, if, if you have the conditions to pay a hotel or to stay out service, sometimes people think that it's better to be in a hotel since you have the conditions. But as I see, for you, it's kind of more interesting to... Way more. Because it, it's, it's not about... For me, it's not about the comfort. It's not about the, the fanciness. Of course, sometimes when you're traveling for a long period, you just want maybe a room for you. Yeah, you know, for a couple of days, you want mm -hmm. just like a, oh, I just want a very good bed and you know, like mm -hmm. something like this, and something that a hotel can guarantee it easier than a couch surfing, uh, which it doesn't mean the couch surfing. For me, traveling is is exchange, is meeting people, is talking to them, getting to know their experiences. And hotels are kind of the same all over the place, mm -hmm. you know, like, and I'm, it's horrible for me to be saying this because I'm an owner <laughs> of a hotel, you know, but, um, but although that's I... That's a good point to make your hotel different. Yeah, right? that's why I try to, to make it different, you know, like I try to, to bring this couchsurfing mentality, you know, of proximity, of, of experience, of exchange into the formality mm -hmm. of the hotel. You know, which is kind of a nice blend. There is other uh, other hotels in the world that does this. Like uh, I know a very nice hotel called Meininga. I think it's a German chain of hotels. And they blended ideas of hostels and hotels to bring it together. They are formal, but in an informal way, mm -hmm. which is kind of nice. And it's kind of inspired in, in those movements that I try to do. Mm -hmm. you know, uh, about couch surfing in Brazil, for example, it's known that um, Brazilians like to receive a lot of people in their mm -hmm. house. Sometimes two, three, four, five yeah. couch surfers. You said yeah. that you received 14 in a small apartment in Rio. Yeah, that was actually a the mistake. mistake. <laughs> no, a mistake in the sense that it was not planned. It was not a mistake. It was one of the best things I've ever actually done. Uh, it was supposed to be eight. I counted eight. <laughs> They ended up turning, uh, 14 turned out, so I'm like, uh, it's kind of complicated because back then Couchsurfing didn't have any system of actually keeping track of everybody that was supposed to arrive, so I was just, you know, taking notes and my notes failed me, so I was supposed to have eight people and, and it turned out to be 14. But it was an amazing experience, one of them were, uh, was a chef, so we cooked for everybody, <laughs> We sat on the floor to eat because it was no place for 14 people in my apartment. Unforgettable experience. And uh, yeah, I'm like, but here I'm like, uh, I've got six. Six was my maximum, actually, with you guys and, and the three Brazilians that were here for the photo shoot. Mm -hmm. So yeah, but we have plenty of space here. Mm -hmm. We'll not have the yeah. same problem yeah. as the one yeah. that you I had. You don't have to sit on the floor. No, <laughs> no, there's plenty of tables, that's for sure. I could have even way more than 14 here. Mm -hmm. But, yeah. uh, do you have any special stories or maybe some weird experiences with couch surfer or work packers? Maybe some personalities that you <laughs> want to. Well, uh, I never. People ask me that. Like, uh, did you have any bad experience with couch surfer? The worst one, but you know, it's not even worse. It's, it's unfair to say that. It was a guy from from Egypt that he was. We went out and with other friends and stuff, and he was not feeling well. And he was taking a medicine, and he forgot the medicine in my apartment. And he was just not feeling great at all, and we, were, we just arrived at the place, so we didn't want to leave, but he wanted to leave, and he needed to leave. So I gave him the key, the only key to my apartment, so he could go back. And he went back, took his medicine, and just slept. <laughs> and once we got back with my friends and everything, there was not anybody on earth that could wake up a guy seriously like we did <laughs> everything <laughs> we slammed the door we <laughs> rang the doorbell and he could not wake up it was amazing so I had to go to a friend's place to sleep in a friend's place because I could not enter my own apartment but it was funny you know like in a way I wasn't angry or anything and in the morning when I went back and he was so sorry like he could not stop saying I'm so sorry and he was truly sorry mm -hmm. you know And I just felt sorry for him. I wasn't even angry or anything. It was like, kind of funny in a way, you know, like, <laughs> poor guy. I'm like, I'm, I'm pretty sure he was not doing it in, on purpose. But like, that's what the worst experience because I had to sleep one night in a mm -hmm. friend's place, which is what I do usually because I'm a couch surfer, so it's not yeah. really a big deal, <laughs> you know. And you said you not only traveled different countries, but you lived in some of them for, for a longer period. Yeah, I lived in the United States, Canada, and France. Those are the three countries that I lived. And uh, my next country, hopefully, 
uh, it's going to be Austria. Mm -hmm. I'm still waiting for the results of my uh, application. Application, mm -hmm. exactly, for my master's degree there. So so far, three countries. Do you know Airbnb website? Yeah, I know. Uh, some of the people that call it like a paid couch surfing or something like that mm -hmm. because because you still stay with the local people mm -hmm. in their houses. You have experience like yeah. Airb uh, like couch surfing, but you pay for that. Mm -hmm. What do you think about? about it why don't you for example choose this kind of um, this kind of business let's say well I don't, I don't believe it's a bad thing <coughs> I actually discovered like uh, three or four when we had the dinner with everybody mm -hmm. I discovered that I was in Airbnb here mm -hmm. the the Casta Quinera mm -hmm. but this is actually a different topic because I've never put it so mm -hmm. I need to find out who was actually ah. <laughs> running this ad mm -hmm because I was not aware of that. Mm -hmm. But I have no problem with Airbnb in that sense because I believe it's also kind of what we call the experience economy. Mm -hmm. You know, you're still paying, but you're getting something more than a service or a product. Yeah. You know, it's it's already an upgrade. I mm -hmm. believe it's an upgrade if you cons if you compare it to a hotel or something like this. Because as you said, you, you pay for accommodation mm -hmm. but you get exchange as yeah. well. Experience. You know, you get experience with the with the host. So this is also interesting. Of course, there's a lot of people in Airbnb right now that just turn it really into a business and make it dry, mm -hmm. you know, and stiff, mm -hmm. because they just have like plenty of rooms and they just do not actually socialize. It's just like a business for them. Yeah. But uh, but although I, you have the freedom to choose, right, mm -hmm. as a customer in mm -hmm. a way. So you can maybe look for people that you see that you're actually renting a room in their house and you're going to be able to socialize with them. You can do this through uh, checking out the references, mm -hmm. checking out how they posted their listings, and there's a lot of ways for you to be sure that you can get more of that experience than just a place to sleep. Mm -hmm. You know, and like I, that's the reason I hate, I absolutely hate to make checkouts with the customers because I try to have an experience with them, you know, like uh, to be personal and mm -hmm. everything, and then. I go there and charge them for this. I feel completely horrible, you know, about it. Mm -hmm. So I that's that's good. We have receptionists because sometimes <laughs> I I actually hide. Oh, they're checking out. So you know, like <laughs> I'm not there because I hate that idea of just asking for something that I have such a huge pleasure in participating. You know, mm -hmm. kind of takes the fun and it brings a little guilt into it. Guilt, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so uh, I believe you know. Tools like road packers, like Airbnb, like Couchsurfing, uh, and hotels like Miningo, which kind of bring those concepts into a, a f more formal mm -hmm. hotel facility. They're kind of the future of tourism because we're going to be demanding more of that. We're going to be demanding more experience than simply a service or a product. We are already doing this. You know, that's what actually brings difference to the business that already exists. Is when you provide experience on top of the service and product that you offer mm -hmm. so okay guys today we we talked about uh with the guy who is moving hospitality in a new level <laughs> i believe in a new ways yes thank you very much Kyle, thank you for thank this you conversation. very much it was an amazing experience to host all of you and to have this conversation with you right now <laughs> We're gonna post some links under this video to Kaio's page in couch surfing to his hotel to as a singer as well yeah of <laughs> course of course so you can experience you can see all of that cool well thank you and thank you. hope to see you in ukraine yeah sure <laughs> pretty soon <laughs> nice